by explaining very well the anatomy of the scaphoid. So uh, this uh, patient uh, presented after eight days of eight days after the injury, and he had fracture at the junction of the waist and proximal pole. <clears throat> so we decided to fix it with the Herbert screw. So uh, uh, headless compression screw, uh, the better word is. So this should be the proper position in the operation theater. Uh, surgeon should be sitting on the hand side of the patient and monitor should be on the opposite side. And <clears throat> next is we have to extend the wrist and deviate it on ulnar side. And before doing any surgical procedure, uh, we should uh, very well know what instruments are available for the surgery. We should also check whether we have all the uh, screw sizes available or not. So next, uh, we mark on AP and lateral planes. So we confirm this under C arm and this will give us an idea for putting guide wire in the scaphoid. So once we have done with this thing, we use this 16 number needle uh, for passing guide wire. This can be act as in sleeve. This is a very good uh, device. So the and good thing is we can see that needle under C arm also. So after putting the needle on onto the distal pole of the scaphoid, you just see in the C arm. We have to direct it along the long axis of the scaphoid and at the same time we have to elevate our hand a bit because scaphoid is like a twisted cashew and it is in three planes. So uh, once we confirm the position we have to pass guide wire. After putting guide wire we should check the position of guide wire in three, uh, three planes. AP plane, pronated oblique view and lateral view. So this is pronated oblique view and this is lateral view. So wire is uh, inside the scaphoid. So after this, we gently remove the needle and now we have to measure the size of the screw required for fixation. So here I have increased the incision a bit and now uh, we are using this direct measuring device. We have to pass it on, on the guide wire and see here, the reading is around 31 mm. One thing we should always remember, uh, we have to subtract 2 mm from the uh, actual length because the this is the length, the, there is 1 mm compression at the fracture site and 1 mm screw can go in, inside at the head region. So I generally do this after putting, after measuring the screw length, I put a uh, guide wire in the distal radius because a lot of times, uh, while drilling, the wire came out and it is very, very difficult again to put the wire into the same hole. So now this is the drill bit. This is a 2 mm drill bit. We have to drill it slowly. And after that, next is to pass a headless compression screw and uh, this is the specialized screwdriver they give uh, with this set uh, there are three marking at the top green yellow and red i will explain uh, about this now it is at the green mark it means that the uh, sleeve is engaged into the head of the screw and our sc screw is slowly going inside And uh, one thing I forgot to tell you, once we put the guide, guide wire in the radius, we, we have to keep the same position of the wrist. Otherwise, guide wire will break. Then, it, then also it is a very difficult situation. We have to open the wrist to remove that guide wire. So now uh, we are crossing the fracture site. So now the here, uh, we can see yellow mark. It means that the screw, top of the screw has reached up to the uh, 
it's flush with the dis, uh, distal end of the scaphoid. So as we uh, drive the screw inside, now we can see that fracture side is getting reduced nicely and compression is there. So at this stage, if we see on the screwdriver, we can see a red mark. It means that screw is totally inside the bone. This is what I was talking. So after this, we gently remove the screwdriver and uh, guide wire. After that, we have to confirm it in uh, all the views again before we, we finish the surgery. Now, this is a, a P, <coughs> AP view and this is a pronated oblique view, screw is very well inside and lateral view. If we see the incision, it is a very small incision. Here, uh, we don't have to take stitch also, it will heal automatically on its own and we give a thumb spike a splint. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.